Good evening, everyone. Uh, tonight, what I wanted to go over with you is how to evaluate colleges in terms of uh, a REACH school, a safety school, a goal school, or a dream school, I should say. And then sort of looking at that, how we're able to use, in this case, collegeboard.org to evaluate where I fall within those parameters. Uh, so pretty short video tonight. I'm going to be exclusively on College Board. So let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to click on College Board, which I've already pulled up. Uh, you'll be very familiar with this, as you know, because this is where you're going to register for your SATs. Uh, by the way, we just had one this past weekend. I hope that went well for everybody that took it. Now, you'll notice under username and password, you're going to see my credentials, but you don't even need to log in to use this feature. Again, this is going to help us determine if we are within the realm of safety to dream. So where I'm going to have you go first is you're going to click on College Search. And you'll notice there are some filters along the left side, which are really helpful if we're still at that point of trying to find schools. Um, I can show you that briefly, quickly, but we're going to focus mainly on evaluating if we're a good fit for a school or not. So um, looking at these tabs, if I were to click on, let's say, test scores and selectivity, uh, this is going to be a great place to start because based off of the SAT test scores, you can begin to hone in on some of the schools that might be a good fit. And you'll notice there's going to be notations of the new SAT math, new SAT evidence-based reading and writing, old reading, old math, old writing, and then ACT composite is the same as before. So let's say you took the ACT, you scored a 27, you would click add 27 in, and then if I hit close and see results, it's already going to start to filter down schools that are looking for a 27 or lower. If I click on type of school, it'll give me different choices, from two year to four year, public, private, for profit, small to a large size school, co-ed, all men, and then religious affiliation, if that's something, let's say, is important. Uh, I've never had a young man in my office say to me, Sir, I think I want all men again. So I usually click this one because even the senior military academies, probably senior military colleges and the service academies are going to be co-ed. A lot of times they'll say this to this or medium to large. I usually encourage two because it's just going to give us more parameters that come up. Public and private, I often encourage to look at both. And then, in this case, we'll look at four-year colleges, close and see results. And as you can see, we've already whittled down to 852 schools. So once again, these filters over here will really help narrow in and hone in on a school that you may not even been aware of, but actually has got everything that you're looking for. Uh, location, campus housing. Uh, majors and learning environment, activities, academic credit, paying, support, diversity. I mean, it's a great site to use if you're starting at point zero. Not sure where I want to go, not sure what I want to do. But the focus tonight I wanted to spend most of our time on is College Search. That's the tab that's at the top. If I click on College Search, this is going to allow me to evaluate and look up specific schools. So I've chosen one already. I'm going to use Davidson. Davidson College, which is in, uh, I believe it's right outside of Statesboro, North Carolina. It's right near Lake Norman. It's a really pretty area of Western Carolina. Uh, so I'm going to hit click, and it's going to bring up right here Davidson College under College Board. So we'll click on there. Now, this is going to be a great overview because, like it says, at a glance, it's going to give you a quick snapshot of who they are. Small four year private liberal arts college. Click on deadlines. It's going to tell me exactly what we need to know. They have a regular application due date of January 2nd. Uh, they do have priority application. They will have notification by April 1 and you must accept by May 1st. So, again, pretty straightforward. They do have an early decision and early action. So, that's November 15th. And then they even list for you when they would like to see the score report sent in for SAT or ACT, and then also your financial aid. So 
this is a really good feature to use on College Board to the specific schools, the deadlines. So we have at a glance, deadlines, majors and learning environment, campus life, uh, application, and then paying. Now under paying, this is something that I would really encourage everyone to look at because, and I'll show you in just a second, if I click back to at a glance and I scroll down, it's going to show some information in terms of tuition and fees 47897 in state. But as you just saw a second ago, that's not really accurate. So what you want to do when you evaluate schools on College Board, if you're going to use the at a glance page, which is where we are right now, we're on here, and we pull down, make sure you always click on see more cost because this will give you the actual what it's going to cost per year. Uh, now this right here, the personal expenses, transportation expenses, this is just a, an estimation, not necessarily accurate. But these numbers right here, they are accurate. And this may even be a little low right here, the 1000 for books and supplies. So just something to think about. This is also in-state, but re, uh, remember, since they're a private school, it's going to look the same. So back up, if we will, to see if we're on track. So I just kind of went over this area here. Now we're going to look at the see if I'm on track. As I pull this down, am I on track is going to give me some information regarding the courses they require for you to have. So you'll notice here, and I'll pull this down a little more, required is going to be that darker gray, almost a black color, and then the lighter gray is going to be recommended. So as you can see right now, computer science, even though it's a requirement of Riverside, it's not a requirement of most schools to have for application. Uh, it's not a requirement for the state of Georgia, but we require it because we think it's important for students to have those skills. You'll notice four years of English, that's pretty standard for most states, definitely Georgia. Foreign language, what is required is two years, but now you'll see this gray area of three and four. So what they're saying here, recommended. Not necessary to have, they will consider the application without it, but if you do have it, if you have a three and potentially a four, which could also be like an honors, maybe even an AP, they're going to look favorably upon that. Okay. Now, this is interesting, too. If you look under history, right now, there's nothing denoted as being required. However, for the state of Georgia, as you know, we have three credits that are required for graduation. So even though they're not denoting they take or require history, we require it, so it kind of null and voids that. And then the math is three with the fourth year recommended. My guess is for the state of North Carolina, they only require up to three years of the math. Georgia, we require four. So we, we kind of, we're helping our students out in that sense. And then the science, same thing. So two required, four recommended. State of Georgia, you gotta have four. So, uh, so as we pull down, you're going to see under tests taken what they require. So they require SAT and ACT, and it looks like they recommend that SAT and SAT subject tests be taken as well. So that's something to think about. If your son is exceptionally strong in one or two areas, let's say English and history, we can take subject tests. Now, not all schools take them or require them, but those that do will use that in addition to the SAT score to get a better sense of the students, if you will, holistic uh, snapshot. Something to be aware of that if you are going to, let's say, apply to Davidson, you need to think about which subject test you're going to be taking because those will be taken on the day of an SAT, but that's the only thing you will take that day. You will not be taking a general SAT and then in addition to that subject test. So if we're going to look at subject tests, um, I would say email me, follow up with me on that so I can give a little bit more guidance. I don't want to spend all, too much time on that one. So now the thing I want to look at is how do I stack up? Now, how do I stack up is probably going to be the best information that you can find on College Board because it's going to tell us specifically what the incoming freshman class looked like last year for Davidson. Now, as you can see, Incoming freshman, 375, and this is most likely going to be an unweighted GPA. So that's important to note. That's not weighted. That's unweighted. 73% of the incoming freshman class 
had a 375 or higher. 17% had a 35 to a 374, and then the 325 to 349, 6%. If you look here at the 3 to 3.24 at 4%, Davidson is a small Division I school, so chances are between here and here, this area in here, this is going to be the athletes. This is going to be the D1 prospects recruits that were brought in who are maybe not quite as academically strong as most of the population that came in, but they, they were an academic fit. So something to think about. If your numbers are here and you're not being requested or called by a coach, then that's not something that you're really going to look at and think there's a chance. Something to really, really remember with Division I schools especially. You see these lower numbers? Take heed. That's probably going to be their athletes. Now, if I come down, you're going to look at the SAT and ACT scores that were the range of the incoming freshmen. And because we've just moved over to the new SAT, you're going to see a lot of data with the old to the new. Uh, as you see right here, you've got the old SAT 2400 to the new 1600. The old 1600 to the new 1600. I wouldn't concern yourself so much with this. The only thing that you probably would want to note is if you took the old SAT and you scored very high, that they're still going to acknowledge and take those test scores. The thing that I've been told that you cannot do is I don't believe you can super score between here, an old SAT 2400, to a new SAT. So let's say I have an old one that I took in last January. And then I have a new one that I just took this month. And I have a high of 650 in the math on the newest one, the one I just took, let's say, this past week. And my math score from January was the best. Can I combine those two? Because they're from two different elements of SAT. As I understand it, no. You can only super score within the range of either the old or within the range of the new. I'll get clarification on that because my guess is every school is going to do it a little bit different. But the guidance I've received so far is you will not see super scoring between the two tests. That's important to remember. So let's look at what we have here in terms of the math. For the incoming freshmen at Davidson, the ones that were accepted now, this is 650 to 750 is the range. Now what's very important to note about these numbers is this is the middle 50%. In other words, there are students that potentially scored higher than 750. It could be as high as 25% were between here and there. Same thing with the reading and the writing. This is the middle 50. And so once again, there could be as high as 25% that scored from here to here. Everything in these statistics, these graphs, these charts, is based on what we call the middle 50%. So I'm going to go ahead and pull down for you and show you something else that may help explain this a little bit better too. Class rank. So I've got my class rank here. As you can see, 55% of the incoming freshmen were in the top 10% of their class. So for Riverside, we have 118 seniors this year. Pardon my math if I mess this up, but I believe that's going to give me between 11 and 12 that would be considered top 10%. You'll note top quarter, so that's the top 25%, 91% were in the top quarter of their class. So Davidson is a very, it, it's a good school, and it is not an easy school to get into. It's a challenge for sure, because if you've got 90% or more are pulled from the top quarter of their class, so in the case of Riverside, we're talking about anyone between the rank of number 25 to number 1, that was the student pool that came to Davidson. And you'll note these numbers here, like top half. So all this does is just tell me that after they got to the 50th percentile of a class, then it really fell off. So this is the lowest right in here. And they also include this number as well when they do this. So it's, it's kind of skewed here. But this is probably the best telling. Half the class, so if they took 1,500 students, 12, uh, oh, pardon me, 750 to 800, we're going to have anywhere from a, 50, or pardon me, uh, a class rank in the top 10%, and in the top quarter, 90% of the incoming class. So that's how we evaluate. 
Now I'm going to go ahead and show you something else. Oh, ACT as well. So ACT scores. Uh, this is pretty telling too for those of you who focus on the ACT more. You know, 29 to 32, this is the middle. So the lowest really that they probably even looked at, as you can see down here, was a 24. And this most likely is going to be an athlete. This is definitely going to be their athletes right in here. So the 24, the 23, 18, if I were to sort of draw a circle around that, those are the athletes. This right here is probably going to be someone who had a lot of other uh, positives to their application. They're probably high in community service. They probably took a lot of APs. Most likely have a higher uh, GPA. So that's maybe where the balance kind of tipped in their favor because the GPA and the class rank were higher. The test scores were a little bit lower. And so they said, well, you know, we'll take a chance with that 28 to 29. But as you can see, this is very telling as to what's coming to Davidson. Now, if I'm looking at these schools and I'm trying to determine if this is going to be a good fit for me, and once again, just kind of coming back to the same page here, we need to we, we need to focus on schools where we are going to be in the middle to the upper middle of the 50th or the middle 50 percentile to use our judgment of is this a reach school? Is this a dream school? Is this a safety school? Is this an attainable school? So right now, for a student who would look at Davidson and say, this is attainable, they have a 375 or higher. They most likely are going to be somewhere between a 31, maybe to a 33 on their ACT, similar with the SAT. They're going to be most likely in this range of the mid sevens. And they're also going to have the class rank somewhere in the top 10%. That's the student who applies to Davidson and says, this is a backup or an attainable school. A student who would be in the top quarter, a student who would presumably be somewhere in the mid to higher six range on their math and, and their verbal score for the SAT, and a student who is probably still at a 375, maybe at a 35 to, but they're gonna be more, they're gonna be much closer to this than they are here. This is a reach school. Okay, so even though they're still within the middle 50, they're kind of smack dab in the middle. Of the middle 50 and so that makes this a reach it could go either way reach and attainable so kind of what's the difference I would say that if you're if you are progressing in terms of growth and development in your transcript in other words you, you consistently are raising your GPA per year you challenge yourself with AP and honors courses uh, you expand your realm if you will of commitment to others, commitment to the community, commitment to, uh, you know, bettering yourself in, in all ways, then I think it's attainable because you're doing so many more things outside of school that you really hit a lot of the other buckets, if you will, that these schools are going to use to weigh whether they're going to accept or not. If you're not, then I think that's when it really becomes a reach. A dream, if you will, is going to be very much like that in that it's, it's, almost, it's almost at the point where it's not attainable, but we're still going to go after it. You're going to be probably at the 650, maybe a little bit lower, but not much, maybe 630, 640. Uh, again, here, maybe 660, 650. You're right below the middle 50. You are pretty much in here okay in terms of you may have a higher GPA than the 349 you may have the 35 but the test score is kind of pulling you down into this area that's where it's going to become a dream a dream means you there's a chance there's that chance that you may have other things in your application your resume again your community service your courses that you've challenged yourself with maybe you haven't made the best grades all along but you absolutely keep getting back into the fight, if you will, 
and that you don't give up, you keep pushing, you keep trying harder things, you're not discouraged, they'll pick up on that. You may have a great essay, a great, just a great package that comes in, and they're they're really impressed. And like, you know what? We get the sense that this is someone who really wants to come to Davidson. There's a lot of demonstrated interest, what we call DI, that supports that if this student is accepted, they're going to come here and they are absolutely going to flourish because we're giving them an opportunity to flourish. Um, you're a calculated risk to them, which equates to a good dream for you. That's a dream school. Um, so you have to be careful because I think sometimes we interpret dream to mean, let's say I have this GPA and I have the sub substandard, in this case for Davidson, substandard test scores, and we think that's a dream, that that's something that maybe could happen. The reality is it's probably not. Uh, the other thing that we want to consider, or, or consider too is sometimes we have this, this ability to reach out to alumni who are still involved with the school, uh, people who sit on boards at the school, you know, people who have connections to the school and you have connections to them. It may be immediate family, it may be extended family, it may be friends. With those, you know, that's something that if you have that potential to reach out through those networks to pretend, you know to get someone to overlook the standards to an application that normally would not get to that point then that's something that if you know absolutely thumbs up that's amazing go for it but please know that in the college counseling office that's not really something that we can make happen we do on our school profile talk about all the different elements that make us hard difficult exceptional unique, challenging to young men. Um, so we, we do put that literature and that language in there so that the schools are aware that we're not the average high school out there. I mean, we do a lot of things that most people, when they hear about it, they go, how do you get through the day? And that's kind of what we want. We want them to say that because then it may give us a little bit more clout with an admissions office, an admissions board to say, well, you know, this student here from Riverside Military Academy has a 3-4 and while I see that most of the kids applying this year are sitting at the 375 or higher, it's interesting to note they're only allowed to take two APs, three with permission from the dean. They have an extremely tight schedule and demanding lifestyle. I mean, this is not an easy school in terms of your time. So that's something that can really help us. So as I kind of conclude here tonight, I just really want to bring your attention that this is a great website to use. This is absolutely going to help you determine, am I at an attainable level? Am I at a reach? Am I at a dream or goal? And safety, since we didn't talk about that, but a safety school would be, we clearly have all those requirements. I mean, we meet that GPA, we meet those SAT scores, we meet the class rank, we meet the criteria. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you once again for tuning in, and I promise this is going to be the last one for a while, so take care.